Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video we're going to be looking at how we can modify a Swift package. First, we'll install a package using Swift Package Manager, and then find that we can't edit it to meet our needs. We'll then clone it, and install it as a local package, where we'll be able to modify it. Now before I get started, let me request that if you enjoy this video, please leave a comment below. Give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. Now, why would we want to install a local copy of a Swift package and modify it? Well, you may wish to simply pick through the code so that you can get a better understanding of how things are done and improve your skills. I often do this by altering the code and seeing how it affects things. Or perhaps it's no longer being maintained, and it's not working on the latest OS, so it needs updating. Or you may wish to improve upon the package for your own purposes. When you use Swift Package Manager to install a Swift package, you can inspect the code, but you can't make any modifications to it. Now, if you're going to be cloning somebody else's work, and altering it and using it for your own purposes, well, make sure that you read the license file to ensure that you are allowed to do so and that you identify any requirements there might be for giving appropriate credit. Now, for this exercise, I'm going to be using code that was produced by Frank Gia in his article titled, Build a Custom iOS Segmented Control with Swift UI. And it was published on Medium here at this site here. I've only made minor modifications to the code to make it compatible as a Swift package and to add an accessibility label. Otherwise, I make no claim to the code, and I'm using it only as an example for my tutorial. The Swift package that I created can be found on my GitHub repo, and I've left a link in the notes below. For this exercise, we're going to create a Swift project using Swift UI, and I'll call it a Segmented Picker Clone. We're going to be replacing the standard segmented picker that comes out of the box with Swift UI with the custom one that Frank created in his article. Then we're going to clone it and install it as a local framework and make some modifications. The standard Swift UI picker of type segmented picker style can be created using the Swift UI picker constructor, and that requires a title and a selection bound to some value and an array of strings or views that you can use for these segmented labels. So for example, we can create a state property like this for our selection. The array of items can be any array of strings. So for example, we'll create one called colors. That's an array of strings representing three different colors. Then we can replace that Hello World text view with a picker that's a segmented picker type, like this. Our picker will have a label of pick your favorite color, which is used for the accessibility label. And the selection is bound to our property that's the selection. Then we can do a for each loop through zero through colors.count, where the ID is self capturing the index so that we can then have the text being the colors index, and then we'll tag it using that index. And then of course we have to set the style to the segmented style. Now Frank's custom picker provides us with a much easier syntax and it also opens up some real possibilities for our own customizations. So let's get started. Installing the Swift package is extremely easy compared to installing one with CocoaPods. This is all you have to do. First of all, make sure that you go to the repository and copy the URL for that repository. In Xcode, from the File menu, choose Add Packages. In the search field, paste the copied URL. 
and if the URL is recognized, it'll be displayed along with the dependency rule. Click on Add Package. When the next screen appears, click on Add Package once more. That's it, you've installed the package. Now, if you want to inspect the package, you can drill down on the package dependencies until you reach the sources slash whatever your package name is folder. And inside there, you'll find the code for the package. And we'll come back to this later when we need to modify our code. But the package is installed as a framework. And this means that it's a separate module so that every part of this code that needs access from your project must be made public. If you select the project target and scroll to the Frameworks, Libraries, and Embedded Code section, you'll see that the framework has been added to your project. Well, now it's time to use it. Whenever you wish to use the package, you need to import it. So, in Content View, we want to replace the picker that we have right now with the new one, and it's called a Segmented Picker. So first, we'll have to import Segmented Picker. We're going to be replacing the entire picker that you've got right now in the body, including the picker style modifier, with an instance of segmented picker. When you do this, you see it has three arguments. The label, an array of strings, and a binding to an int. Well, that's what we've got already. So, it'll be pick your favorite color as the label. The items, the array of string, will be our colors. And the selection will be bound to our selection. This is a much nicer implementation, and the segmented picker is arguably nicer too. What I'd like to do is to customize that picker by allowing the user to specify the color that they wish to use as the background behind these segments. Now if we add a background modifier to our picker right now, and specify a color.red, it doesn't work. The entire view's background turns red, not the background to the picker. If you read Frank's article, you'll see how he created the custom picker. So if we now drill down again onto the segmented picker source, we can see that there's a private static property called background color. That's assigned as the background of that custom view. What we want to be able to do is to modify that color so that it can't be static. So let's change that. Oops. We can't. As I mentioned, Swift packages are not modifiable. We need to own the framework. And that is what the whole point of this tutorial is all about. Now you could go to the GitHub repository and clone the package and add it to your project as a local framework. But there is a fast and easier way to do this. Just right click on the package dependency and choose Show in Finder. And this will open up the finder for the location where the package was added. It's a pretty deep dive, but don't worry about that. Right click on the selected folder and copy it to your clipboard. Back in Xcode, right click on the project name at the top of the project navigator and show in finder again. And this will open the finder to the root level of your project. Now, Paste in the copied folder from that previous step. Return now to Xcode and remove the Swift package. And to remove the package, you select your project in the Project Navigator and make sure that you click on the project and click on the Package Dependencies tab to view all dependencies. Select the one that you want to remove, then click on the minus button. Next, open your root folder and drag and drop the package from the project root into your project navigator. This will add it as a framework. At this point, I suggest you exit your project. I've had issues with source control while doing this, so I recommend that you remove any source versioning entirely at this point and add it back later. To remove source control, you can just open the new framework folder and enter command shift period, and this will reveal the hidden files. Delete the one titled git. 
Once that's done, you can just enter command shift period once more to hide the hidden files. You'll still need to add the framework to your target, so open the project and select your project, select the target, then scroll to the Frameworks, Libraries, and Embedded Content section. Click on the plus, and the list of frameworks and libraries will be displayed. Select your new framework from the Workspace section, and click on Add, and this adds it to your target. You should now be able to build your code without any issues, and it will run just as before. The difference is that now you'll be able to modify your code. Now, if you're comfortable in modifying code in a separate module, then there's no need to continue on with this tutorial. However, what I'm going to do next is show you how you can use two different ways in which you can modify the background of the picker. The first way that you can do this is by making that background color property in the segmented picker code available to be modified, at least optionally, from the project. So open the segmented picker from the sources segmented picker folder in the framework. The first time that you try to edit this file, you'll be asked to unlock it. So what we're going to be doing is replacing that static property with a variable one. So we'll replace the background color, the static one, with just a var of background color, of type color, but we're not going to have the initializer here. It has to be publicly accessible, so we'll need to modify the initializer for the struct. So Inside the initializer, we'll set the background color to be of type color, and it's here that we'll initialize it as that color of a secondary system background. And then we have to assign self.background to that background color. Then scrolling down to the body, that segment picker dot background color is no longer available. It's being replaced by that background color. If we return now to Content View and Build, we'll see that nothing has changed. It just accepts that default background color we assigned. However, if you type a comma after the second argument in the selected picker, you'll see now that you can add a third argument, and that's a background color. So let's do that, and let's just pick a different color. Well, this method is not very Swift UI-ish. In that Swift UI, you are less likely to pass additional arguments into a view, but rather apply a modifier, like a background color modifier, that can modify and update the view. So let's return now to the segmented picker file, and let's remove all those things that we've done previously. Now I'm gonna make sure that this background color property now does actually get the default color, which is the color secondary system background. We no longer need the public initializer, so we'll make sure that it's removed from there. And then I'm going to create a public function that I'm going to call background color. And it's going to have a color property as its parameter, and it's going to return a new segment picker view. In the body of the function, then, we'll create a property called view and assign self to it. Then we can apply the color that's been passed in as the background color property in our view. And then we can return the view. If we return now to our content view, Make sure that we remove that extra property because we're not accessing the background color from the initializer anymore. But we can add the new dot background modifier to the segmented picker itself, passing in some color. That's it. Now, if you want to work with a view model and an observable object, then let's see how we can do it here. This is just a little bit of extra. Let's create a new file called MyColor. 
and change the import to Swift UI. Next, create a struct called my color that has two properties var name, that will be a string, and var color, which will be of type color. Inside the struct, I'm going to create a static property called mock colors. And that will contain an array of these my color objects. So let's create three inside of an array to return. Next, create another file called ViewModel. Again, change the import to SwiftUI. And create a class called ViewModel that conforms to the observable object protocol. Inside the class, create a property called Colors. That's an array of my color. And assign it an empty array. Now, if we're going to be updating this from our view, it should be decorated with the at publish property wrapper, but we're not. We're going to assign it in the initializer. So create an init and then assign the my colors, mock colors to colors. Now we do need a publish property and that will be our selection that we'll be changing from our view. So we'll call it selection and it will be an int initialized as zero. Create another var that's called names and initialize it as an empty array of string. Then in the initializer, we can map the names from our colors array to that property. We'll create one more computed property that's called selected color and it'll be of type color and we'll assign it the color of the selection item of the colors array. I can return to content view now and replace the two properties with a single state object and initialize a view model. We can now then use the view models properties in the segmented picker. So for the items, it's the vm.names. And the selection will be the view model's selection property. And then in the computed properties view model, we've got that selected color. So let's just change the background to the view model selected color. So now when we select any segment, the background of the picker will take on the color of the selected segment. Nice, simple, and readable code. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And for the first time, I've also created a detailed transcript. A link is on the repository, and I'll also leave that link in the notes below in this video. Thanks for watching.